Hi everybody and welcome back to the channel. Today I'm going to talk about how to install DeepLabCAD GUI and later how to use Google Call App to train neural networks to recognize motion capture data from your videos using all those free GPUs from Google. But before I begin, I just wanted to ask everybody to please, please, please consider donating to Ukrainian Armed Forces who are defending Ukraine against the internationally recognized sponsor of terrorism, Russian Federation. It is very easy to do if you go onto a website of National Bank of Ukraine. If you scroll down just a little bit, they um, are asking you a price you're willing to pay to save innocent lives. And here is your pay button. So the similar process you would go through on Amazon, Etsy, only here you're contributing to saving people's lives. So if you dislike terrorism and want to save Ukrainian civilians, please consider donating. And now back to the tutorial. All right, you legends. So as promised, I'll tell you how to install DeepLab Cuts very briefly, and then we'll go work with uh, Google Call App and train neural networks there. So in front of you is a page from the documentation section from uh, DeepLab Cut description. So uh, it really requires just a couple of easy steps to uh, install DeepLab Cut GUI, which I'll walk you through. So the first step is you need to install Anaconda. Anaconda is an open source distribution uh, that has and simplifies installation of the libraries and execution of Python code. So since most of us uh, have it, I will just briefly uh, tell you how to install it. So uh, we open this link over here to go on the official website of Anaconda. You enter your email here and agree to receive communication from Anaconda. Click Submit, and what's going to happen next is they will send you a link uh, to for installation of uh, their software. You install it, and then you can go to the step two in here, building an environment. So what is an environment? Environment is an instance of a different uh, Python library, so I should say um, their versions, so that whenever um, the creator of the library changes its version, uh, it doesn't mess up the uh, performance or just uh, uh, capabilities of the uh, DeepLab Cut uh, GUI. So that's what we're going to do. We're going to build an environment with a particular uh, set of instances of libraries. So because I have a Mac, I will go click on this link. For those who don't have Mac, please click on this one. All right, so I download this file, which basically uh, has just uh, a bunch of dependencies that needs to be installed uh, for DeepLabCut to work. All right, so downloaded this file. Here it is. Let me copy path to that file. Go to terminal. All right. Let me maximize it a little bit. All right, then I want to navigate to the folder with the file. So that I would do by just deleting the file name from the uh, uh, string that I copied from the path name. I'll do that. And then we're going back to the website where they conveniently included the line that we need to execute. So if, again, if you have Windows or Linux, or I forgot to say Max with Intel chips, you execute this line for those with M1 and 2 chips, we execute this line. That would install the environment that is needed for DeepLabCut for you. So uh, it will take a little bit, so I'll speed up the video. It's been two eternities since the uh, installation began, but it finally finished. So I wasn't time to microwave my lasagna, eat it, and then get hungry again. But we're back. So after installing the environment, we need to activate it to start working with it. So for that, we just copy this line on the activate. Oh, on the activate, copy, paste. And I have some mess there before Conda. <laughs> so we activated the environment. We are in the environment, which you can tell by this uh, DeepLabCut M1 right here. All right, so we are ready to start working with DeepLabCut GUI by just typing Python M Deep Lab Cuts. So here's our GUI. And uh, here's the button to create a new project, as you can see. But before we do that, uh, we need to set up something else. So because we will be working with Google Call App, it is easier to put your data in, onto Google Drive. And the easiest way to interact with data on Google Drive is to download uh, Google Drive for desktop. So 
That's what I'm asking you to do next. Once Google Drive file downloaded, go to downloads and install it. Once you install Google Drive, go ahead and open it and sign in your account. Click a couple of additional things in the Google installation app and you should be good to go. Now that you install Google Drive, it will appear as additional folder in your finder. So here you will see your Google Drive. So now we're ready to uh, create a project and put it on our Google Drive so that they can later interact with Google Colab. So project name will be and kinematics because I'll be analyzing video of my hand movement. Experimenter is best researcher in the world, arguably. And the location will set a location to our Google Drive, my drive over there. And it will create a folder under my drive. So on your Google Drive. Number of cameras is equal one. Uh, files, browse videos, my video of my hand moving is in downloads. Make sure to pick the folder, not exact file, because it will pop up in here. <laughs> All right, copy videos to project folder. I want to do that. And let's create our project. So that went pretty fast. Now let's begin uh, setting up our neural network parameters and labeling the data. So the first thing you need to do is you need to extract frames from your video so that you can analyze it frame by frame later. So uh, if you want to leave it defaults, it's fine. That's what I usually do. But if you're a more advanced uh, user, feel free to modify this. So we click here, extract frames, and wait just for a little bit. You can monitor the process of frame extraction in uh, the terminal. Frames were extracted, so we're ready to move on to uh, the labeling of the frames. So one thing to mention here, if you want to um, label specific landmarks on the body you're analyzing, you actually need to go uh, and modify a file with an extension YML file. So uh, hand kinematics here, let's go to this config file and open it with a regular text edit. So if you were to add more body parts or more landmarks that you want to analyze, you would modify this part by just adding more uh, body parts or, oops, space here, more body parts, more objects or whatever you want to analyze there. I'll go with the default settings and I will show you how that works. All right, so let's minimize this and label frames. Yes, we want to choose from here and open the uh, folder with extracted frames. So by default, uh, the number of the frames you'll be labeling is equal to 20. And this again, you can this number you can change in the config file. If you go here, you will see the number of frames to pick is equal to 20. Let me maximize this a little bit. So uh, here is where I was modifying or where you're supposed to modify body parts or right here. And uh, the number of frames to, picks here, to pick here is 20. So that's why we'll be uh, labeling 20 frames. All right, here's a brief tutorial for you, which is nice to have. I already went through it before. All right, so as you can tell, there are 20 frames. The first one has index zero. That's why you see here zero and 19. And let me uh, quickly label the frames. I'll uh, speed up the video for you guys. All right, I'm done labeling here, but I forgot to mention that there are various tools that you can use for labeling. For example, there if you want to increase the size of your markers if your task requires so, or if it's easier for you to see, you can do that. Uh, this tool here is for actually choosing markers. One tricky thing with this tool is if you want to delete marker, if you say misplaced it, you need to click uh, this tool to choose markers. This one is to delete them. But then uh, one thing to remember, you need to go here and click to body part one if you want to restart the whole process. Then you will put the markers on the landmarks again. Now, why are we doing this? You may ask. So this labeling is here to provide the neural network that will be tracking the landmarks and throughout the video 
to provide the training data so that it knows where the landmarks are supposed to be. So that's what we just did. Now, after labeling all the data, don't forget to click Command S or Control S to save what you just did. And um, you should get a message over here, data successfully saved. If you don't like button combinations, you can also uh, click uh, save selected layers over here, but the combination of button should be all right. Now, what you want to do is you want again to use something the Deepakka team has already created for you. This Deepakka notebook. We want to download it. I'll provide the link in the description. And then we want to go to Google Collaboratory and click um, upload notebook. Upload, browse, downloads, collab. And we're ready to work in Google Collab. So now, again, there are a load of instruction you can go through, but simply what you need to do is first, you need to run this section that will pre-install all of the dependencies needed for you to work with Deepakkad uh, online and trade your neural networks for free on GPUs from Google. This process will take a while, so I'll speed it up again. After the installation of dependencies is completed, you will see a message like this popping up. So what you want to hit is restart session so that all the new libraries that you just installed link up with the current session of um, uh, Google Notebook, Google Collab Notebook. All right, so next we want to run the cell to uh, connect our Google Collab and our Google Drive. So connect to Google Drive, use my account. All right. Now, make sure you read the messages here. So the message says that you need to go to config file that we already looked at. That's the file with the, where you specify the landmarks and the number of frames and change the uh, name and the path to the project to this. So that's what we're going to do. We'll go to finder. We'll go to our config file. Oops. Let me open it with the regular uh, text editor. All right, let me maximize it for you. So what we need to plug in is something like this. And going in here, and I'll explain why we're doing that. So here's a line that says project path over here, and you can see project path on my uh, local uh, instance of Google Drive. So what I wanna do is I wanna copy this part, uh, leave the name of the folder, because the name of the folder didn't change. Delete this dummy variable here and make it this. So it's content drive, just as a regular path, how you specify it or when we are working with Google Drive and my drive, this is the same for everybody and then name of the folder. So we should be good to go here. Save and proceed to uh, the next cell. So here we need to specify the name of the folder. So you obviously can always, oh, you can always copy it from here, from the same config file, or type it in if you remember it. Our video type is MP4, and we don't need to modify anything else here. So just execute it. All right, double check the link. Looks correct to me. Then we're importing the plopcut. So we need that library to be imported. All right. Now we check the version. That's a correct version. Now we create a path to config file. Again, nothing needs to be modified here. So next we need to create a training data set. This is a very simple step. Again, just an execution of the cell. So here you need to pick the neural network that you will be using to um, uh, track the landmarks on the um, hand in our case. So residual network is a type of network with residual connections. So there are multiple ones you can choose from. Actually, the easy way to look them up is to go to create training set, um, tap over here and tap on this error to look at all the available options. And then there is also augmentation methods here. We'll just go with the default one that we had there. 
So here I want to pick ResNet with 101. 101 simply means 101 layer deep. So then, yeah, in an augmentation method, we, as I said, we'll just leave it at default. So let's execute it. All right, we imported our pre-trained model with all of the weights that we'll be optimizing uh, later in the script. So the next step is uh, where we're starting training. So obviously you can see here that there are several parameters you can modify. I advise also adding a parameter called maximum iterations. So in this case, let's leave them at 10,000. I don't want to save my solution too often because that would clog up the memory. So I will leave it at a thousand and I want to display every single iteration because I really like to monitor the processes every single step. All right, let's start the training. So our training began. If you want to stop the training at any point of time, because for somebody 10,000 iteration is a long wait for a preliminary result, you can click on this button, which will interrupt the execution of the cell. It will give you a key interrupt error, but don't worry about that. You can proceed to the next step right after that. It seems like my loss function started plateauing, so I'm safe to stop training right now. One thing to also consider, if your training is not progressing as fast as mine, or sometimes when you're processing larger videos and cannot actually progress as fast, but if it's really, really slow, you might want to consider going to runtime, manage sessions, and double check if it's running on GPU. If it's not running on GPU, but rather on CPU, you need to go to the runtime, change runtime type, and click here. I stop the training by hitting this button over here. And as you can tell, I got keyboard interrupt error. That is totally fine. Now, what I want to do, I want to start evaluating the network. So this also may take a while, so I'll speed up the video. We are done evaluating the network. Now we can proceed to start analyzing the videos. Let's execute uh, the cell over here. To get your desired trajectories and create labeled video, there is only one step remains. So let's just execute these two cells and I'll show you the results. The trajectory is uploaded and the uh, labeled videos are created. So let's now go to our Google Drive folder then click on our project folder, go to videos subfolder. And here is a labeled video that we created. Now I should warn you that I stopped training prematurely and also chose the network that is not deep enough for tasks like that. So we will get some optimal results, but results nonetheless. Yep. We definitely in this case need a network that is slightly deeper. But even this network trained for only about five, seven minutes and I shows pretty decent results. Now I also promised to show you trajectories. So if we go to plot poses here, we will have trajectory image over here. Yeah. So as you can tell, I was moving my hand from left to the right. And these are full points uh, shown in different colors. Remember, we also chose their name in uh, config files. So uh, yeah, these are the points uh, on my hands going from right to the left as they were in the video. If you want a better results, definitely keep your training uh, for longer and also choose deeper network. For example, ResNet 152. All right, congratulations. You made it till the end of the video. Uh, just to recap, today I showed you briefly how to install DeepUpCut GUI and later how to use it together with Google Colab to train neural networks to get motion capture data from your videos for free on uh, Google GPUs. Thank you so much for watching and I'll see you in the next one.